I'm going to do a little bit of, of Alaska Fiscal Issues 101 and, and a dose of fiscal reality for those, uh, those who, who want to take it on at 6.15 in the morning. Um, for a long time, those of us who've been talking about fiscal issues have been talking about uh, resolving Alaska's fiscal, fiscal situation through cuts to the budget. Um, and the way that we're going to work ourselves out of this situation is cuts to the budget. We don't need taxes. We've argued that we don't need taxes. We don't need PFD cuts, which is t- which are taxes on income in another form, uh, that, that we can resolve this. Uh, I've talked about the Hammond 50-50 plan, which is implementing Governor Hammond's original vision for use of permanent fund earnings. Half, 50% of the earnings would go in the form of the PFD. The other half would go to government uh, when uh, oil was no longer sufficient to uh, to, to um, uh, uh, fund government, that we'd use the other half of the earnings for that. Between that, I and others have argued between that, implementing Hammond 50-50 and, and cutting uh, expenditures, that you would be, um, uh, you would be able to, to, to bring the fiscal situation back into balance. Frankly, that's not, that's not what has happened. Um, some will tell you that's, that's still the, the goal, some will tell you that's still the objective, but frankly, that's not what happened. What happened this last session was uh, the legislature, frankly, ran out of steam in making cuts. Uh, the House, uh, controlled by uh, Democrats largely, sort of never really got started in making cuts. There were efforts by the Republican minority to uh, propose cuts. Uh, they were largely rejected by the majority, uh, and there was really never, ever effort to cut. The, the, the effort had really, had over time, the effort had really concentrated on the Senate uh, to make those cuts. Uh, and frankly, the Senate uh, ran out of steam also this last year. Uh, what they finally decided at the end of the day to do uh, was to cut the PFD instead of making more cuts in spending. There's a, there's a piece that Tim Bradner, a longtime legislative observer, wrote in the ADN last, last week uh, talking about that and essentially said uh, cutting the PFD is a done deal, uh, that there's a legislative consensus on doing that, and that's how they intend to go forward. The Senate, uh, 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 the focus of the effort to make additional cuts, uh, at the end of the session voted 12 to, to the Republicans in the Senate who, were, who had campaigned in 2012, 2014, and 2016 on we're going to make cuts, we're going to make the hard decisions, we're going to get uh, spending under control. We're going to reduce the cost of government down to uh, to a level that we can live with, uh, with using Hammond 50-50 or some other approaches. Um, the Senate voted 12 to 2 to cut the PFD instead of making additional cuts in spending. It's not the Valley. The two Valley senator, two of the three Valley senators were the two that voted against that, that voted to preserve the PFD and voted to make and 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 made statements about making additional cuts, the need to make additional cuts. Senators Dunleavy and Senator Hughes, uh, Senator Dunleavy from Wasilla, Senator Hughes from Palmer, uh, were the two that voted against uh, that majority decision to make cuts, uh, cut the PFD instead of make additional spending cuts. Uh, But the other 12, including Senator Wilson from Wasilla, voted to, to, to cut the PFD instead of making additional cuts to spending. So, Yes, we can continue to talk about making cuts that we're going to bring Alaska's fiscal situation into, 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 uh, into shape by making additional cuts. We don't need P- T- PFD cuts. We don't need taxes. We can continue talking about that, but we're sort of talking to ourselves. The reality, the debate has moved on uh, to, uh, to the fact that, that they now think uh, that, that cuts in the PFD – are to use Tim Bradner's term, done deal, and uh, and that's the way we're going to go forward. Frankly, to me, that is a horrible decision. Uh, the economic analysis that uh, that has been done over the last years, over the last couple of years, has has confirmed, concluded, and confirmed that cutting the PFD has the largest at quote. This is this is this is from ICER, the Institute of Social and Economic Research, Alaska's economic think tank. Quote. Cutting the PFD has, quote, the largest adverse impact, close quote, on the overall Alaska economy of anything you could do, anything you could do. 
Another ICER analysis uh, has concluded that cutting the PFD is, quote, by far, close quote, the worst thing you can do from the standpoint of Alaska families. When you look at what the PFD does on an income distribution uh, uh, table, you know, dividing Alaska into income brackets of 20% with the lowest income being the lowest 20%, the, the low middle being the next 20%, the middle being the next 20% from 40 to 60 percentile, the upper middle being uh, uh, 60 to 80%, and then the top 20%. When you divide the income that way, what you see is that uh, cutting the PFD cuts the income of the lowest uh, level, the lowest 20% of Alaska families by 30%. For an average family of four, you're cutting their income. When you cut the PFD the way the Senate's done it, you're cutting their income by 30%. The middle, you're still cutting it by 12%, cutting the average, an average Alaska family of four in the middle income category by 12%. The upper 20%, you're cutting it by less than 2%. You're cutting their income by less than 2% when you cut the PFD. So looking at the ICER analysis, they're saying cutting the PFD has the largest adverse effect on the overall Alaska economy, and and it has by far the worst effect on Alaska families. And and, And the reason for that is this unequal distribution, this massively unequal distribution of the way the PFD cuts uh, hit uh, Alaska families and and hit, uh, 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 hit Alaska individuals. So going forward, I know there are people who want to continue to talk about making spending cuts. God love them and and, and will continue to be one. It is not that there aren't ideas on how to make additional cuts in spending. I could spend this entire three hours going through in detail how we could make additional cuts in spending. But the Senate voted 12, the Senate Republicans, the Senate Republicans, these are people who ran in 2012, 2014, and 2016 on, 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 on campaigns that said, we'll, we, we will make the cuts. We will make the hard decisions. Those Senate Republicans have decided, decided this last session, 12 to 2, that they were going to cut the PFD instead of making additional cuts in spending. That's the reality that we're facing. We can all tell ourselves in our echo chamber that we need to make additional cuts, but they decided not to do it. They decided to cut the PFD instead. So when you talk about Alaska's fiscal debate going forward, we're not really talking about cuts anymore. They will try to talk about cuts. The senators will want to divert your attention, and candidates will want to divert your attention by saying, oh, yeah, we're going to make cuts. But they didn't do it. When, it, when push came to shove, they didn't do it. So what we're going to talk, be talking about going forward, and we'll talk a little bit about this in the, in the 7 o'clock block uh, when we talk to Lynn Gaddis and Andy Holloman, what we're going to be talking about going forward is if we've got to have new revenues, what's the best way to raise new revenues? Cutting the PFD is the worst. We know that. We know it has the largest adverse effect on, on the overall Alaska economy. We know it has by far the, 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 the worst effect on, uh, on Alaska families. We know that's the worst. So what is better? What's the better way to do it? Some people talk about sales taxes. We'll talk about that with Andy Holloman. Some people talk about income taxes, progressive income taxes, mimicking what the feds are doing. And I know you don't want me to talk about this, but this is the reality that we're facing, people. The Senate didn't make the cuts. Government hasn't made the cuts. They cut your PFD instead of making cuts in spending. And, and, and I talk a lot about flat taxes, and I'll be talking about that in some in the next hour as well. And Brad, why do you think they are so adverse to I, – I mean, common sense tells us why they don't like the cuts, but you would think this is common sense. That's what you and I do with our budget at home. What, what's happened to Alaska government over time is it's been captured by various special interests. And, and special interests were responsible for blowing up spending – Spend it on my project, spend it on my project, adopt this program, adopt this program. Now that we're facing cuts, the special interests are kicking in and resisting cuts yeah. to their program, saying, well, cut somebody else, but not my program. And in the aggregate, what that does is stalemate the ability to make deeper cuts because everybody's got a senator, everybody's got a 
got got some yeah. legislator they can go to and say, well, don't make cuts in my area. <laughs> and they all get in a room and they say, well, I can't cut this, I can't cut this, I can't cut this. So let's cut the PFD instead is basically how this ended up. So that's, that's Fiscal Policy 101. We're going to be talking about that more in the 7 o'clock block. But coming up, we're going to have Donna Gates on, and we're going to talk.